Snappy, thank you so much for coming on the AIM podcast. Absolutely, man. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you guys. Dude, I have been watching your content for such a long time. And when we got the chance to meet each other in um, in Atlanta for that event, man, I was so excited to meet you, bro. Just, I love what you do. I love the positive energy you have. I love how you're inspiring and helping people and you do it in such a cool way, man. So I'm really, really excited about this episode. Thank you, man. Absolutely. It was, it was absolutely great meeting you guys, you know, just it's great meeting new people, honestly. Like that's one of the most uh, important part of like me traveling when I get to meet new people. So yeah, it brings me joy. Dude, that's awesome. I didn't realize though that you're based in Phoenix. I was just there um, this past week. We were out in the Grand Canyon and we flew in and out of Phoenix, man. I wish I'd have known you were there. We oh, definitely yeah. could have got on the course. Yeah, absolutely. Next time you're here, let me know. No, we'll get out. Absolutely, man. But dude, I'm I'm excited to get into your story. Obviously, people see all the viral videos, the exciting things you're doing on social media, but I think behind all those incredible people that post the content, they have a story. And I, I really believe everyone has a really cool story to share. So I would love to hear kind of your background, your upbringing, and what you what kind of led you to to get where you are today. Okay, absolutely. Well, first and foremost, before I start, like, I would just like to give, um, give glory to the person who gave me what I have, which is uh, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, honestly, he's the one who was got me through in and out and everything that I'm doing in my life. So just wow. giving giving him the 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 glory that he deserves. So let's um, go. Yeah. Back to my foundation. Uh, a lot of people don't know, but you can pick the accent a little bit. I'm Nigerian, born and raised. Um my whole life. I lived in Nigeria for 18 years. And then I moved to the United States, I think right when I turned 18. So um I was born ninety nine. Uh, you know, I have my my dad and my mom. I have siblings, uh, two sister, one brother. It's girl boy, girl boy. I'm the baby wow. of the house. Um, just you know, one of those things as a kid for me it was like I was scared about being separated from my parents, and it happened so early for me. Even like my my biggest nightmare came came to pass really quick, you know. So um you know just life happened and I had to I had to move away from from home just for certain reasons you know safety and um there's just some more into it like I'm not gonna dive deep into it just give you guys surface level but you know just thanking God how he brought me here um I ended up in the Bay Area Richmond I don't know if you know about that it's kind of like around San Francisco yeah um so uh I lived with um this family, my host family, um, up there in Richmond for four years. And when I first got here, um, I I only had my visitors visa, so I applied for asylum and you know, I got I got granted asylum and I was granted a work permit and you know, I was able to go to school and work. So um I applied to a school next to that house, like down the street, it's called Contra Costa College. Um uh and then I I applied for work at Target. So I worked at Target and I was going to school. And then I joined the soccer team. Mind you, I didn't play soccer that much back in Nigeria because my main sports was basketball. And when I came out here, the competition was crazy. I was like, I'm <laughs> 10. There's no way I'm going to make it to the league. And, you know, <laughs> um, so I was like, I got to find another sport and just, you know, hop in there and try and, you know, thug it out because I'm I'm athletic. You know, God bless me, athletic, uh, athletic sure. So I was like, you know, it's cool. So I went with soccer and I worked five times as hard as my teammates would because I didn't, I was in technical, I was just quick and physical. Um, I had to work on the technical, work on playing smart. And, you know, I made it on the team. Um, I eventually I made it as a starter on the team, you know, played my first, second year, um, got like second, second best striker um, of the year, something like that. Um, played really well. And then after that, um, I started playing semi-professional soccer. Um, just diving into the part where people don't really know, like the struggle that I faced before coming to become who I am today. You know, people would say, oh, I want to become like Snappy, but do you want to go through the struggle I went through before mm -hmm. becoming Snappy? That's you good. Know, people don't really think about that part. Um, honestly, like, 
it was it was rough. Uh, there was times where, you know, my schedule was just I wake up at three thirty in the morning because I have work at four in the morning. I go to school to I go to work till eight, and I have classes from nine thirty all the way to like five, and then I have to, you know, balance my time and then walk back home, pick my soccer equipment, come back and then train from like six to eight. And then go back home and I'm the baby of the house. So I have to clean, do the dishes and then do my homework and then reset again to the same thing the next day. And wow. then on the weekends, you know, I try to sleep in as much as possible. But then I'll work from like maybe nine to five or, you know, an eight hour shift to get as much shifts as possible so I can be able to uh, sustain myself, you know, because um, I was by myself. And, you know, life is hard out there for my parents. It's not easy for them to be sending money. So I had to like strive for myself and then be able to help them support them um you know it's just it was a tough time I did that for almost three years uh, and then eventually I picked another job doing food delivery and I was just driving my car around I got my first car so I was driving my car doing food delivery and you know it was working well kind of balancing time and then COVID hit and then that was all I could do because I couldn't work at Target with nothing so I was you know making a little change and then after COVID some of my teammates that we play soccer with, you know, they always want to hang out. Hey, Snappy, what are you doing? Like, let's just hang out. I got so used to staying at home during COVID and playing video games, I didn't want to go out. So they're trying to get me to hang out. And then one day they called me, they're like, yo, just come out. You coming out today? We don't care, whatever, whatever. It's like, dude, I got homework to do. And they're like, <laughs> 15 minutes later, they called me. They're like, come, come to your window. I looked out my window. And I saw them parked outside. I'm like, oh, these guys are actually serious. So I went out, met them. I was like, what are you guys doing? They're like, bro, go get dressed. We're going out. It's like, I got to ask my grandma. She let me out. And yeah, I was praying. She says, no, because she's really scared about the COVID situation. <laughs> and she don't really let me out like that. Because all, all she, if, if I'm going out, it's either soccer or I'm going to go work. That's it. Go practice and then, you know. So... Um, that night, for some reason, she said yes. I was like, damn. Um, and then I asked them, like, where are we going? They were like, golf range. Golf range. What am I going to go do at a golf range? Like, I've never played golf before. I don't know nothing about golf. Before, if you told me golf, the first thing that comes to my mind is a boring sport. Like, just boring, you know? And we went to the range. Like, you don't have to play. You can just hang out with the boys. Not everybody's playing. All right, whatever, let's go. So we got there. I wasn't really happy because I didn't want to be there. Mood was kind of down. And then um, watching them hit balls, like it was night. So you could see the ball disappear. Like, Damn, like <laughs> that, that is fine. And my friend was like, hey, you should give it a shot. He was like, all right, yeah, I'll teach you. I was like, I don't even have a golf club. It's a risk giving somebody your golf club who has never played golf. For sure. <laughs> so, exactly. So he took his brother's golf club and gave it to me, his driver, his brother's driver, because his brother was not there, and he had his driver in the back. I'm like, here, yeah, use my brother's driver. Funny enough, I broke that driver that night. I broke the shaft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, he, he tried to teach me how to, you know, swing it two hands. You know, I just couldn't do it, man. It, was, I, it wasn't I it was working. He told me, keep my hands straight, do whatever, turn your hips. It's like, this is, it was just going in here and coming out. Um, and he, he got tired of trying to teach me. He got frustrated. He was like, you know, just hit it. Do whatever you want to do. And he left me there. And in the process of just trying to do what he told me to do, I held it with one hand. And I waggled it and felt really comfortable. So there's this sport in Nigeria. It's, it's not a sport, but it's like a game we play as kids. Call it local hockey. So mm. we we plug branches that look like shaped like hockey sticks. And then we cut like a pug out of a, a soft slippers it looks like a, a pug but it's soft it's not as as heavy and hard as a pug so we roll it to each other and then we use the sticks and hit it right we roll it to each other and then you try and hit it you try and hit it so um at that in that moment when i swing i saw on the golf club I, I didn't even think of that you know i just held it i was like oh this feels good and then you know just i don't know god did his thing and i I rolled it around my head and whacked the ball. And everybody was like, whoa, like, what the hell? And, I, you know, to me, I was like, it wasn't a big deal. I was like, wow, like, actually, I can hit it. And then I, I teed it, I was like, do it again, do it again. 
<laughs> Why put it again? But it's like, no way, you know, they pulled out their phones, started recording, taking videos, like, bro, how are you doing this? I was like, I don't even know. And they immediately, like, <laughs> the excitement just got into me and, you know, my mood changed and I was just happy the rest of the night and wow. I just kept hitting balls and it was fun. They got videos of it. My friend sent me the video and I ended up breaking my friend's club, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and then... um uh, the night before going to bed, something just told me, post it on your TikTok. And that's just God telling me, just like, throw it out there. And I listened and I was like, you know, oh, cool. I'll just, before I went to bed, I just posted it up there. Low quality video, literally had my Snapchat name on top of it. You know, when you save a Snapchat and it has a Snapchat thing on it, that's yeah. how it was. Um, so I posted it on there. I woke up the next day, it blew up. It had like 1.5 million views. I was like, what the hell you know my phone was blowing up and you know i looked on instagram i saw messages from sports center house of highlights all these huge channels hey can we post your video and give you credits i was like yeah sure man. like you know i've never seen something like that nobody with a blue check has ever dm'd me so i'm like <laughs> go ahead like you know and from there you know my following just started growing i think i gained almost five thousand followers that first day and TikTok too started growing and I went back. Um, I think two days after that, we went to Golf Galaxy and I had to buy my friend um a new shaft. And then I bought him a new shaft. I bought a $40 driver. I, look, I asked him, I was like, you guys have any like used drivers? But yeah, there's some used driver. And I looked and I saw this $40 driver. And I was like, you know, cool, I'll take it. And then, you know, a couple of days later, we went to the range. Boom, 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 hit balls, recorded videos, posted, boom, boom millions of views i'm like wow okay this is this is actually this is nice and you know i just started doing it doing it and i I kept on getting better and skills started coming to my head and just you know different things and you know adding it to the swing and you know and it brought me to where i am today you know just all, all praise to the most high honestly bro that is an incredible testimony incredible story first off i have i have so many questions to ask about the golf and everything because i'm super interested but before I move past that, man, I want to first applaud you um, for sharing your faith, because I think that's something that, you know, we live in a world right now where that's, you know, not everyone wants to talk about that. But the fact that you made that a point to kind of set the stage with that, I think is amazing. And you also talked about something that's really interesting to me. And I think it's something that we share in common. Um, you know, I think a lot of times people see where people are through social media and they're like, man, their, their life must be amazing. There must, you know, they must have it all figured out. But what you mentioned, and I, I want to hear more about like what you learned through this season, is there was a lot of work. There was a lot of struggle. There was a lot of hard times that led up to this point. What do you think you learned the most about yourself during that season of life that has prepared you for where you are now? Because I think this is a topic a lot of people can resonate with, no matter what they're doing, where they are. People are going to struggle. People are going to go through life. It's challenging. Mm. But for someone like you who's been through that season, and of course, I'm sure you still have challenges that come up but you're in, you're in such a better position. What's some advice or some things that you learned during that season you could share with the audience? Um, Honestly, you know, just, I, I made a lot of mistakes. I fell, but you know, it's not about what happened is what you do about it. Mm. You know? So falling, getting back up, you know, you try and walk, you fall, you get back up. Um, I've had people who have come into my life and, you know, try and take things out of me and, you know, just try to take something out of me because they, they saw something great, um, you know, but at the same time, it's a lesson. It built me to be who I am today. I can't just go zero to 60 quick like that. Mm. You know, there's steps to it. There is, it's a, it's a journey. And I'm still in that journey. So good. You know, so like there are times where I felt like, damn, like, why is this things happening to me? Like, like, why is this, you know, this deal will come in and it will fall off. Why is this? Oh, why is, you know, is there's always a why, why, why? And then I wasn't really close to God to understand what that meant. And like, honestly, in the past two, three months when you know, I found light and I found God and I found peace, love, joy, and happiness. Everything made sense. Mm. God breaks people down 
to build him back up. He allows those things happen to build him back up because so that when he blesses you, you are able to sustain that blessing. Because there are things where if I had gotten certain deals at that time, those huge monies, like, what would I do with the money? Mm. I would spend it on reckless things like cars, jewelry, this and that, right? But, you know, he made those things fall. It didn't work at that moment to build me to where when I realized that when that money comes in, there's a purpose for it. Wow. I found my purpose. And my purpose is to help other kids from my hometown. Wow. My, like, the puzzle came together because my, man, so my dad, my dad, my, or let me, let me go deep into this. Yes, sir. Uh, if you got time, but let me go deep into it. 100%, bro. I'd love to hear it. So my grandfather was an evangelist in Nigeria. My grandfather was well known all over Nigeria because wow. of him preaching the gospel, you know? So my dad had siblings here in the United States and he was living here in the United States too. So when my dad was get my grandfather was getting old, he called his siblings and told them, hey, look, he needs them to come out and take over what he started. And none of them agreed to it. Well, my dad did because he's the first point. So he went back home and he took over for my grandfather. And, you know, he, he became an evangelist too. And he started preaching and, you know, doing the work of God. He had a stone crushing quarry, a family stone crushing quarry. And, you know, it shut down at some point, I think like almost 11, 12 years ago. And my dad hasn't been working since then, but God has been sustaining him. It didn't make sense to me, but like, like, I was like, how is he still feeding the family? How is he still doing things to help us? And, you know, but now it, it makes sense. Now that I know and I grow up, it makes sense. Um, you know, so just just off of that, like, like I already, I already have a Christian background growing up. And growing up, I didn't even like going to church, you know. My dad would play Christian music and all those things, and I would, I would just put my head on the side and just squeeze my face like, I don't want to hear these things. I just want to go do my thing, you know. But now I appreciate it. Like, like that's the biggest gift a parent can ever do. Like the Bible says, raise your children in the way of God so they may not depart from it. So no matter how far away you go into the world, you still have that in you. You can still fall back to it, you know. And... It's just, it's amazing what God is doing in my life and how he's showing me how life is and the perspective of life. And, you know, it's my, the way I look at life now is totally different, man. Just totally different. So um, back to, back to what I was saying, kind of went off track a little bit, <laughs> but um, yeah, just, you know, <sighs> I don't even want to have words to even like describe it, man. It's God is great. God is great. God is great. I love it, bro. And I appreciate you sharing that. I mean, that's that's incredible. And it's it's so cool to see how one person's faithfulness can trickle down to generations to generations. And and the the work that your grandfather did and your family did come all the way to you. And now you're able to have the resources God's blessed you with with this platform to reach many people. His work came through you, and now you're able to do work on a whole nother level, Absolutely. all because of God's all his faithfulness, which is crazy. Absolutely. Like my you know what my dad does now? What's that? So he they there's um he works with this foundation where they go in like I don't know if you have you heard of Boko Haram? It sounds familiar. It's like a terrorist group like ISIS, but in Nigeria. You know, you know, Fulani, they go into villages and kill people and destroy people, take people's cattle and, you know, take people's lands, all these things. So the kids that survive from that, what my dad does, they go out and bring those kids. They pick them up from the villages, bring them to, the, to like the city area. And he built like a, a shelter in the back of our house. And he 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 put these kids in there. He sheltered them. He gave them food, clothes, you know, he, he teach them, you know, the word of God and just it's it's dramatizing seeing that like like your parents are being killed and you escape from it just that's that enough is a blessing 
giving other people hope. That's what he's doing. Um, you know, so he was doing that. And now, like, it just made sense, like, for me to be able to give back and help. And my goal now that God has showed me, my objective is to build a proper structure for these kids where, you know, they have, like, people, hire people that would come and cook and, you know, take care of these kids, give them hope of life, and eventually, like, build hospitals wow. and schools for these kids, you know, introducing golf to my own hometown, my own home community, like, building, like, a a, a structure, like, a mini top golf type structure where, you know, people can have an opportunity to go and, you know, give it a shot at golf, you know, so just those that vision that's my goal now and you know i'm just glad i found my purpose i glad i'm glad i found my destiny and i found my true identity in christ you know it's just it's it's the best feeling ever honestly Come on, bro yeah. i love it it, cha it changes everything it really does yeah every mm -hmm. every decision you make every action it all has now a, a new purpose to it and a new weight to carry and it's it's really exciting man and it's I'm just, man, I, I was a fan of your content. I was a fan of your energy and your passion, but getting a chance to truly hear your story and hear what's behind it all, man, I'm, I'm that much more of a fan of what you're doing, bro. And I can't wait to see the way God's going to continue to use you in a mighty way with your obedience and your faithfulness to him, dude. There is nothing that he can't do with through you, bro. 100%, man. 100%, dude. I, I'm, I'm grateful, man. I'm grateful. I'm so grateful. So, so grateful. Yeah. let's go man well dude i'm i'm curious so you post this first video you guys are going out and it goes boom it just goes viral and then you're like okay i've got something here i start you're posting more content up to this point though were you posting any type of like content on tiktok or was this like the first time you started like actually consistently posting um before that first video, I posted like soccer content, like motivational soccer. So I was playing soccer and then, you know, I posted a couple of soccer videos. They might still be up there. I'm not sure. But yeah, um, I did post like a couple of soccer content, but that was about it. And, you know, and I posted that, that golf one and changed everything. And at what point were you like, man, I think I'm on to something? Like, was it that first video that kind of changed it or did it take a few videos for you to really like settle in and be like, dude, if I keep doing this, like I'm, I'm building something pretty special. Oh, it took a while. Honestly, it took a while. Um, I was still like locked in to say, cause I, my, my goal was to go professional in talk. I, I was just like, dude, I, I want to go professional. I want to go professional. I was working hard towards it. I, I put in so much effort and work towards it to the point where I was like, I can't just let it go right now just because of this golf thing that just happened. And, you know, um, my initial plan starting this year was, you know what, this year, that's why I took gap year from school last year, um, last semester, from last semester um, through this year, I was like, I'm going to take a gap year, focus on golf and build my brand, establish myself in the golf community. And then the following year, I can go play professional soccer. But then when I, when I found light recently and I found God and I'm able to like hear his voice, you know, I was I was asking him questions and then I asked him, so like, what do you want me to do about the soccer thing? Because I still want to play soccer. And I heard the voice tell me, that's not where your destiny is. I've already showed you where your destiny is. Wow. So immediately I was like, I'm done soccer. I'm sorry. You got to Yeah, I can I can have fun and play with friends, but that's not my destiny. You know, that's that's meant for somebody else. And that's how life is. You gotta, you, you can't look at somebody's destiny and be like, oh yes, that's that's where or you look at like I cannot be like Messi. Then no matter how much I move the ball, I'll practice, I can't move the ball like Messi because that's the blessing that God has given him. Everybody has different blessings. So you have to stick to your blessing and just capitalize on it. That's what that's what people need to do and take their eyes off of what other people have and focus on what they have. Be contented with what they have. 100%. I used to be that one person where I see somebody with this, I'm like, damn, I want to have it too. It's all pride. You know, it's just being, a, being able to humble yourself 
and and bring yourself low. Like there's no feeling other than that. Like before I, I let the fame get in my head, but now like I'm glad like I let that pride go. I I'm 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 making myself as humble as I can because I am a human being. It's just a title. Oh yes, you snappy Gilmore, you had so many followers. What if there's no no social media today? What if it's all gone? So what? That's facts. I'm human being just like anybody else is. We have the same organs in our body. We have the same eyes, nose, mouth. I don't before I used to see th things, oh, there's all these racism things going on. I don't even see color anymore now. We are all one. God doesn't see black or white. He sees us as one. Let's go. And that if, if we learn to understand that and and have love for each other, that's when this thing will break. But if we don't show love to each other and forgive, forgiveness, if you cannot forgive somebody mm. and let it go. And that's that's the only way out. If you if we learn to forgive and love one another show love to each other. But, you know, the devil knows, so he's going to try and not make that, you know, happen where everybody has love and forgiveness for each other. And, you know, I'm glad I figured it out, man. I'm glad I figured it out. You got to keep doing your part, bro. You're doing a great job, man. Yeah. I'll try as much as possible, you know, to share light to the world as, as much as I can, as my days are numbered in this world. So let's go, bro. That's amazing. As you, so you felt God put it on your heart to really dial in and really go all in on this golf stuff, you know, from where you started to where you are now, I'm sure you've had a ton of crazy experiences. Is there one that comes to mind? You're like, man, this was, this was unreal. Just like a moment that you're like, that really just kind of confirmed that you were doing the right thing. Yeah. The moment I figured out that, you know, I made it when, is when like, I started like working with huge brands like NFL you know, like Premier League. Wow. All these huge things that when I was a kid, I was like looking at these things that are like top. And now I'm working with them, like having a conversation with them. It's it's unreal. So that's the moment I'm like, wow, okay. Like this is it's real. It's real. I to take it serious. So that's yeah. incredible. And I'm curious too, I'm sure have any pro golfers reached out to you like about how to do your swing or asking for tips or like, have, has anyone been like pretty curious about what you're doing? Funny enough, I don't think so. Really? You know, maybe if I've met them in person, yeah. like, yeah, I've seen your video, like, how do you do it? But like, none <laughs> of them reached out to me to like, you know, ask about it. That's been, But that's been something you've been doing more recently is going to the actual golf tournaments and like making content around tournaments. Um, yeah, um, I have a bunch of tournaments actually coming up, um, you know, like celebrity tournaments, you know, tournaments with friends, even my own tournament. Um, I'm doing my own, my own first tournament. So let's um, go, um, you know, so play a couple of programs and trying to get to to do more of that so I can get to meet people all around the place. So, yeah, that's super cool, man. And I, I have seen some of your videos where you've either taught a kid or taught someone else your swing, man. Is that when you're at the range making content, is that something you get a lot? Of people want to like actually get taught your swing. When I, it's crazy when, <laughs> I, like, I'm just hitting balls out of nowhere. I just see a bunch of kids just run out of nowhere and just come. Hey, is that <laughs> even at Top Golf, you know, when I'm hitting balls, dude, I, I can't count the amount of times where people just <laughs> and just come like, oh, we want to see, want to see it. Um, it's. It's amazing, you know, just being able to share with the world what God has blessed me with. You know, before I had this mentality where I was like, damn, I don't want to teach anybody. I wanted to just be myself, be, mm -hmm. be with me. And that's wow. pride, you know. But now my mentality has changed and it's like, what good of it would it be for me not to share what God has blessed me with, with the world? Come on, bro. That's so good. You know? So like now it's just what I want, all I want to do is like just teach people as much as possible. Just, you know, spread it out to the world, man. Like everybody just, you know, give it a shot. Try it. You never know. Like that could be what works for you. That's how it started for me. That's what worked for me. 
not that I can't swing two hands. I started learning how to play two hands. I figured I was really even good at it. Wow. You know? So like, you just got to try it. You got to try it and see what works. So, yeah. I love, I love your heart behind that, bro. That's, that's awesome. You did touch on another question I had. So you can, you do sometimes swing with two hands if you're like playing on the course. Oh yeah. 100%. Um, I started learning how to play two hands like a year ago. I around summer actually not yeah so right around this, this uh around this time started learning how to play two hands um the reason why that happened was I got new clubs from TaylorMade and they were metal um iron iron shafts with my irons and they were heavy they were like 120 G's and I was swinging graphites before that it was sticks clubs they were like 70 G's so it's a huge difference yeah massive difference so. I started, you know, I was swinging and at some point I started, my shoulders started hurting. I was like, why is this hurting, you know? So I it made, and I looked at the clothes, I was like, no way, it's because it's metal. They were heavy. Mm -hmm. that makes so I stopped swinging one hand with those clubs and I asked Taylor me to get me fitted. And, you know, they got me fitted and it took almost four, five, four months. I don't know. I can't remember. It took a while before they sent. So in the wow. process of waiting, I was like, since I'm waiting, I don't want to just sit there and not do anything. Let me learn how to swing two hands. So I I picked the club and I started learning. I was like, it's not that bad actually. I I'm you know I have something in there. And I I started grinding and you know started getting better and now I I think my best round I shot par seventy one, um even though it's just ones and then recently you know I've been I've been in the seventies eighties a little bit. Um, just trying to get to to scratch by the end of the year, swinging two hands. Um, also, like doing the swing a lot, you know, it puts a lot of pressure on my shoulders. So I have to like regulate myself for longevity. You know, mm. I have to help my muscles and make sure I have strong muscles. You know, just for the long run. So I I don't do it every time. Like not twenty four seven. No, I'm not doing it twenty four seven. Like, I would play my short game. Funny enough, my short game is all one-handed. Like, 50 yards lower, like, one hand, I'm way better, you know. Um, and then before I used to hit the bunker shots one hand, now I'm learning how to do it with two hands. I'm really good with it with two hands. You know, finding what works best for me. There's some times where I'm hitting the, from the fairway, like an eight iron, nine iron, I use my swing. This, it just depends on how I feel in the moment, but I don't do it as much as before. So just so I don't, you know, hurt my shoulder. For sure. Yeah. I was, was going to ask you, like, do you have certain exercises or things you do like to make sure you keep your shoulder in good health? I know you talked about working out. Like, do you have a certain regimen that you do to like maintain proper health in your shoulders? Um, Honestly, I just, I just, yes. Well, there's a certain workout that I do that, you know, for my body and it works for me. I have like a, a a setup that I use and it works for me. I do like the the side and you know here get the dumbbells, yeah. you know up, do chest, you know helping the the muscles here, my back same thing helping the muscles in the back and all that stuff. So yeah, a little workouts and just being consistent with it, helping my core, being strong and you know being able to hit, yeah just you got to be consistent with it too so you can't you can't fall out yeah. so cool bro that's so cool man i i really enjoyed hearing your story and and kind of the ins and outs of how you operate but i'm really curious man where is all this headed like what is your i mean you kind of touched on it in different points in the in the conversation but like what is your kind of end goal with all of this are you looking to build to something like where is this headed for you um honestly in the future what i see is you know I see, I see myself as a CEO, which I am already. Um, I have my company, you know, putting out my merch, you know, having my line grow as big as, as much as I can. Um, and then at the same time, just having to spread what I have as much as I can out to the world, you know, reaching many souls and just touching many people in a positive way. Um, a lot of people are in the dark. A lot of people are in the dark and, you know, they need, they need help. They need help. And I, you know, just people come up to me and tell me, dude, you, your videos make me happy. That alone, you know, awesome. that joy to me, you know, just thinking about that. So that keeps me going like that. That's what keeps me 
keeps keeps the gas on just you know being able to share all this even though there are people that don't like it and it's okay you know if you if people don't like what you're doing you're not doing it right you you need haters facts and, um you know and i pray for my enemies too i pray for my haters and i pray for them that one day they find light they find peace they find joy they find happiness just as i had before i used to hate my haters i used to hate my enemies but now i don't like i pray for them i pray for them to to find light i pray for them to to to, to find god you know just as i had and i hope they do one day so good bro it's so good and and uh, yeah i think it's cool how you, your heart behind it is such, such, in, in such a good place for the Lord that it, God can do crazy things. He can soften hearts. He can enter people's lives just when they least expect it through someone that's committed to serving him. You might have a video that a person's hating on. And then that next video, they might be like, dang, something in here doesn't feel right. Like he didn't come back at me with negativity. He just continued to be positive. Like you know, people start to get, they get curious. Like they start to think about things. And then that's when God goes to, that's when he goes to work, man. So oh, that's yeah. typical oh, way to do that. Absolutely. Yeah. I've had people, you know, you know, I, like there's this video I posted recently of teaching that kid. And this lady said, oh, like, oh, you shouldn't be teaching them. Like that means I shouldn't be teaching white people. I swing. I should be teaching black people my swing. And I told her, I was like, there's no race in my dictionary. Hmm. Like, unfortunately, there's no race in my dictionary. It could have been a black kid. It could have been a white kid. I don't care. You know, I'm, I'm just doing what I love to do and sharing it with another kid. That's that's what it is to me. So, Bro, you're the man, dude. Super thankful for you, bro. I'm so thankful you came on the podcast. I'm really excited to put this out. I think this message and your story is going to help so many people, man. This has been a huge blessing. So thank you so much for coming on the AIM podcast, bro. Absolutely, man. Thank you so much for having me. And and for all of you watching, just want to let you know, no matter what you're going through, but God loves us, man. He, mm. you know, just whatever storm you're going to get out, everything, everything you're going through in life, it's not there to be there forever. It's temporary. It's not there forever. So just think about it. Whenever you're going through something difficult, something hard where you just feel heavy in your heart, just think about it. It's temporary. It's not going to be there forever. And you're gonna get through it if you if you ask God. He says, "Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open." That's ask good. And shall receive. That's so. good, bro. That's good, bro. I I'm living in a in a house this summer with um this amazing group called the Jaywalkers, which we have a conference at the end of the year. I would love to invite you to. Um, it's a Christian conference, but they put out this song called Silence. And when you just said that, it made me think of the song. It's like even in the hard times, we deal with we deal with things. We feel like God's not with us. We feel like he's silent. He is still working. Yes. He's still working. Yes. You're yes. such a testament to that. And, yes. uh, you know, God was working from the day you were born and he's still working now. And I'm just so excited to see the way you've been faithful to him and all the cool things he's able to do through you now. And, and all the lives are able to impact is truly incredible. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. All praise to him. All praise to him. Well, snappy bro we got to get on the course sometime soon you got to teach me that swing man i want to give it a couple of shots but dude this is you, a fun podcast man. thank you i got you 100 i still got my canes man let's rock you my canes you know let's go cane fam here i got some too hey. got all the flavors bro all oh them. there you go yeah man they, they're really comfortable honestly like my my all my team everybody was like yo like how could you get one for for us i was like damn <laughs> Yeah, everybody loves it. Everybody be asking about it, you know, even at the gym, anywhere it goes, just everybody bro. everybody loves it. So we need, we need a snappy times cane collab, bro. That'd be it's tough. Coming. It's coming. It's coming, yeah. bro. Bro, this has been such a fun episode, man. I can't thank you enough, bro. Absolutely, man. Thank you for having me on here. Let's go.